Welcome back to Open Line. We are talking about taxes and money. And we have with us Dr. Friday. Thank That's you right. for being here. No Tax specialist. Lots of good calls. We're just yes. going to keep going to the phones. Cool. All these people calling in. Let's go to Ricky. Hello, Ricky. Uh, yes, sir. I've got right. a question for you. I have a retirement that I'd like to uh, take out and spend it on, spend it as I would like to on the farm without paying the 20%. Can I do that? Um, probably not. <laughs> Love to tell you yes, but unfortunately, um, I mean, what you spend it on, if it's a, an actual operating farm, you might be able to depreciate and get some of that back, but basically it, it's going to, you know, you're going to have to take it out, pay taxes, and then invest it, and then hope that that investment is accelerated enough where you might be able to wash it against the gain that you have. But other than that, there's no, there's no easy answer to that, unfortunately. But you don't, there's no way of putting it in an escrow, a farm escrow or something like mm. that to where you can use it a little at a time without having to pay taxes on No, sir, unless unless you convert it into something. But no matter what, if it's in a standard retirement account, there's tax dollars in it. And so unless you were like the earlier caller where her income is just low enough where she can take it out tax-free, um, you're going to end up paying taxes. Maybe not 20%, but you're going to pay some tax, and it depends on your actual ordinary income. And does it depend on his age as well? No. Well, yes, I guess. That's where the young lady was saying 59 and a half. If you're 59 and a half, there's no penalty. But um, if you're under that age, then there could be additional 10% penalty as well. Right, okay. All right, let's go to Ellen. Hello, Ellen. Yes. Go right ahead. Um, I, I called in earlier, and my uh, disability is not through an employer. It's through what I have paid in over the years, which is a, a ton of money, okay. um, number so, one. Number two, I didn't quite get the answer. Uh, I didn't understand the cool. answer about a foster child who claims that dependent. Okay. Um, so, in essence, you are, and we may need to ask her this, but you are... Um, you are not paying tax on that disability because you paid tax when you d contributed into it, correct? A ton, okay. yes. yeah. No, I, yeah, I understand. I mean, it's very expensive. I'm I not, get... it's, a, it's not what's called welfare SS. It's not no, a... no, 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 no. This is a private insurance that you paid in all your life, and now you're, you're, you're getting it back. But you paid in. That's why it's tax-free to you. In answer about the, the child, you can claim it, but you're not filing taxes. Um, there's no earned income for you to claim the child, so there's no taxable situation that there's no refundable credits for you. Um, so unless you can... You know, I, and I have no idea, but if there's any way of doing a part-time job or, or something like that where you may be able to do some sort of work, you know, and then then there's an advantage to having a dependent. Otherwise, really, there's no advantage. I mean, right. tax-wise, there's that many advantages. Off? Is it thirty-five thousand? I mean, as far as as far as I mean, you win ten thousand, you could you can get some credits back. You can get the thousand-dollar child credit if they're under seventeen, and you can apply for some earned income credit theoretically. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Ellen. Let's go to Richard. Hello, Richard. Uh, yes. Got a question. Have a child, senior in high school, dual enrolled. Do I take the lifetime learning credit, tuition and fees, or the American Opportunity credit? American Opportunity most likely is for the first two years, um, and when he says dual enrolled, it's in high school and college at the same time, correct? Whoop. Correct? I cut you off. Yes, what? correct. Okay. Correct. okay. Yeah, I would take the American Opportunity. You have a 1098T? I do, but you know, you get a maximum of 2500 so you, if it's not very much, would you be wasting the American Opportunity credit when you might get more in later years? So you only have the first... Uh, and, I, you know, you can do tuition and, and education tuition if you want to. I mean, I don't know how much, since it's a, it's a split year in essence for that child because that they probably didn't spend a lot of money they go into community college right so did you really spend any money uh maybe six seven hundred dollars oh okay well yeah just do the tuition one then now i mean it, you're not going to have enough and it'll come right off for you up to that point as long as they didn't get the up um if they got any grants or anything coming back at them it may wash it okay no grants nothing uh, didn't, don't they don't most kids get the uh lottery uh, you know what I'm talking about where every right, child, I can't Tennessee. remember the problem, there's a lottery, the lottery money helps pay for that, everyone gets like a thousand dollars, does she get that? Did not. Okay. 
then you will probably get that six seven hundred dollars off of your tax return thank you no problem thanks all right very good so we have about two minutes left what are what are some of the takeaways what do you want people to take away with all a lot of great calls oh it's been awesome i really enjoyed the show because it's it's always fun to hear and to know what people are wanting to know the answers to because obviously otherwise i could talk taxes all day and <laughs> not hit one thing that anyone really wants to know about um I guess the biggest thing is to file. If you don't know if you need to file or if you owe money, because one of the reasons people usually don't file is because I owe money and I'm a little afraid to file. If I file, then the government's going to come after me, levy lien sees, um, that kind of thing. It's not, it's not the right approach. The right approach is to file. You can get put into a non-collectible. You can get put into an, a partial payment plan, a payment plan. And, you know, if it's big enough, and, and I say big enough if, in most people's minds, but if you owe more than about $10,000 or more, then I would suggest an offer and compromise, possibly, if you qualify. But um, all those different things, and, and don't buy in maybe to every one of those commercials that say, you know, we can settle for a dollar, um, that kind of thing, because every situation, I've done this for 20 years now, I'm an enrolled agent, it's what I do, um, and everybody's different. Everyone has a unique situation, so just make sure you get good advice on how to file your taxes. Do you do that? Is that something you do? Uh, all Negotiate time. with the IRS? That's what I love. That's my passion. <laughs> And you do see those commercials. You and do. And you wonder sometimes. And you do. And everyone comes in, and I'm just telling you, you know, get solid advice. Make sure you talk to someone. Enrolled agents, that's all we do. We're licensed just to do that kind of thing. All right, we'll take a break. Come back. We'll wrap everything up. Be back right after this.